So in this section, we're going to start learning about CSS. And CSS stands for Cascading Style Sheets. <laughs> and uh, CSS is how we format our HTML document. So we do the formatting with CSS. HTML is for the structure. For CSS is for the formatting. JavaScript is for the functionality. And that's known as a separation of concerns in programming. So we're going to go over all of that in this video. And in this section, we're going to look at CSS starting with separation of concerns. And then we're going to look at CSS rule sets, which is how we define the rules we want to apply, the formatting rules we want to apply. And then we're going to see how to link CSS to HTML. So to say, hey, these CSS rule sets connect to this HTML document in this area of the document. We'll see how to do that. And then we'll, we'll see how to use multiple CSS selectors. So we could select multiple things on, on an HTML page and format multiple things at one time. So the first thing is a separation of concerns. And so separation of concerns is a programming concept, which just means that you want to put different things in different areas. You don't want to have all of your code combined into one big pile, one big document. You want to separate those concerns out. And so with HTML, with web programming, when creating websites, we have three areas, three primary areas for our separation of concerns. We have HTML, which is for the structure of the document, and we've seen how we create the basic structure of a document. We have the HTML doc type declaration, the DD, DTD at the top, and then we have the HTML tag, and then inside the HTML opening and closing tag, we have the head area and we have the body area, right? That's creating structure. We're creating structure for our web page. So HTML is for the structure. CSS is for the formatting. We're going to format our HTML using CSS. And JavaScript is for the functionality. So you want to do some client-side programming and have things occur on the client side, like when people enter a password and then confirm your password and they're incorrect. Let's have the browser check that with JavaScript and then let the user know if they entered two different things that don't match without having to talk to the server. That's client-side functionality. It's on the client's machine, not on the server, the client's machine. So there's client-side and server-side. JavaScript does functionality client-side. All right, so those are the three primary, primary areas uh, when we separate our concerns with creating websites. Those are the three areas. And so here's the HTML, the structure. And so we'd structure our document like this. We'd have a header area, and these are actual HTML tags or elements, whichever phrase you want to use. Uh, these are actual, actual HTML elements, the header, the section, article, aside, footer. And we'll use these tags to structure our document. Hey, this is the header area. So inside body, we'll have a header area. Inside uh, the section, we'll have an article, right? And you could see what that would look like right here, right? So inside the body, we have the header. Inside the section, we have an article. <coughs> And, uh, and then, you know, all of that stuff right there, that's in the body area. And so that creates this look right there. That's structuring our HTML document. And you can see that this is semantic HTML. Uh, semantic means meaning. So if you were to go and just say Google, search for semantic define, right? Uh, semantic relating to meaning in language or logic, right? So this is known as semantic HTML. And this is really different than the way most people build web pages, <laughs> or the, particularly the way they built them in the past, right? Because in the past, they just used divs. And this was known as divitis, divitis. So just notice how much clarity, how much more clarity using these tags which is the preferred and recommended way to build web pages today using semantic tags, how much better it is to use these semantic tags, semantic HTML to define the structure of your document than just using divs. So div is just like another section, basically, and you know, it's just another area in a, in a web page. And so this doesn't tell you anything, but this you could see the structure of the document much more clearly. All right, so avoid divitis and use semantic HTML. And so then we'll take our CSS. So look at what's going on here. So we have another file. Here's our index.html, which is the structure, the HTML. And then we have our main CSS, which is our cascading style sheet for our formatting. 
and we are connecting. We and you, we connect it right here with this link. Link a style sheet, and this is the one we want right there. So we're linking this style sheet to this HTML page, and we're saying, hey, here's our rule set, and our rule set has a selector, and then it also has a declaration block. Everything between these curly curly braces is a block. So we have a declaration block, and inside our declaration block, we have declarations. So we have three declarations here, and each declaration says a property. So here's the width property and sets it to a value, 100%. And we'll go over all that again. So that will become totally ingrained in your head. But here we're connecting this selector to this tag. And we're saying make the width 100%, make the height 100 pixels, and make the background color red. So when we look at this web page, this is what it does, right? It does that formatting. It took the header area, made it 100% wide, made it 100 pixels high, and made the background color red. So that's the basics of formatting an HTML page. And the main things you want to take away from this video, the first thing is that we have in programming a separation of concerns. And so in web programming, creating websites, the HTML is for the structure, the CSS is for the formatting, and the JavaScript is for the functionality. That's like the main thing you want to take away. And, and you want to write semantic HTML right? And avoid dividus. So that's what you're going to learn in this course is semantic HTML. And then we'll, we'll use CSS to format that HTML. And so we could use, you know, rule sets like this, which go and select whatever was selected, whatever element was selected, and then format it. So we're going to see how to do all of that uh, in more detail in the next videos.